Welcome to the second part of the online presentation on using MATLAB and Simulink to solve differential equations. This is uh, focused on an application related to the vertical motion of a rigid sphere under the influence of gravity and aerodynamic resistance. In part one, we formulated the differential equations and in part two, we will show how to construct the simulation model in Simulink. Effectively, the simulation model will implement a numerical solution of the differential equations. Moving on, the first slide presents the previously defined differential equations relevant to the problem. The first differential equation specifies the rate of change of velocity, and the second differential equation specifies the rate of change of altitude. These two equations form a system of uh, first order coupled nonlinear differential equations due to the presence of nonlinear terms like the sine of the velocity, the speed square, and the nonlinear coefficient, uh, which represents the drag coefficient. Since these uh, equations are nonlinear, it is easier to solve them numerically by employing a simulation model, and this is why we're going to implement this in Simulink, and therefore solve them numerically over a vector of uh, defined uh, time points, which will be either fixed or variable depending on the simulation uh, preferences. This slide shows the final simulation model, which represents these two differential equations. By the end of this presentation, we will show uh, and explain the importance and significance of all the blocks uh, represented in this simulation model. This simulation model is a discretized implementation of the differential equations over a finite time vector and for each time point the velocity and altitude will be calculated as the solutions of the differential equations. To begin with, we will mention what we mean by signals and systems in a simulation model. Signals are time-dependent variables and are defined over a discrete set of time points and are represented in simulating using arrows. For example, we have the acceleration signal of the sphere represented by an arrow, which is an input to an integrator block and the output of this integrator block is another signal, which is the velocity of the sphere. Velocity and the acceleration are both time-dependent variables. In this case, for the simulation model, they are uh, finite uh, vectors of, uh, as functions of time. Operators are functions which process signals. For example, the integrator operator represented as a box in Simulink is a function that receives the input and produces the output, which is the integration of the input. So in this case, if the input is the range of change of velocity, then the output is the integration of this, therefore it is the velocity signal. Other common operators are the multiplication or division operator, again receiving two inputs and producing the output as the time-wise division of the input signals. Another common operator is the addition operator, receiving two inputs and producing the output as the time-wise addition or subtraction of the input signals. Moving on, the most important operator when implementing a numerical solution of differential equations is the integrator operator. 
The integrator operator is represented in simulink using the block with symbol 1 over s. The reason being that 1 over s is the Laplace transform of the integrator operator. It is a very essential block because this is where essentially the uh, integration is performed. The input signal, which is assumed to be the derivative, is integrated and produces the uh, output signal of interest, in this case the velocity. Furthermore, when the uh, integrator block is double-clicked, uh, it is possible to specify some initial condition, like the value of the velocity at time zero. This presentation will start to show how to implement step-by-step step the differential equation, the non-linear differential equation for the rate of change of velocity of the sphere. So the expression we are interested in implementing in the simulation diagram is this one here. So the first thing to do is to place the integrator block whose input will be the rate of change of velocity and whose output will be the actual velocity vector. Again, as mentioned previously, the signals in the simulation model will be uh, finite vectors who are functions of time and the time will be defined as a fixed uh, set of points, discrete points uh, of timestamps. So moving backwards from the rate of change of velocity, we see that this is equal to 1 over m times the addition of two signals, which are in the parentheses. 1 over m can be specified using a gain block, which receives an input, and then the output is the input multiplied by whatever the gain is. In this case, the gain is 1 over the mass of the sphere. The input to the gain block is the addition of two signals, the gravity force and the signal sine velocity times the aerodynamic resistance. Since this is the addition of two signals, it, the output can be represented by an addition block with two inputs being added, being negated, and then added. So the first input will be mass times acceleration, which again can be produced by using a gain block multiplying the constant which represents the acceleration of gravity. <coughs> the second input can be constructed by multiplying together the sign of the velocity times uh, the aerodynamic resistance signal. The sign of the velocity can be constructed by using the sign block in simulink, which receives an input, the velocity of the sphere, and produces an output, which is the sign of the velocity. The, the constants defined at this part of the simulation diagram, like the mass of the sphere, the acceleration of gravity, must be defined in a MATLAB script, which must be executed before the simulation is run. Uh, once the MATLAB script is executed, then the constants and other parameters are defined in the MATLAB workspace and can be accessed by the simulation model. Moving a step backwards, we can construct the aerodynamic resistance force, the magnitude of the aerodynamic resistance, which is given by this expression here, as was defined in part one of the presentation. This expression is a multiplication of various signals and constants. Therefore, it can be the output of a multiplication operator with five inputs. 
The first input is a constant, 1 over 2. The second input is the density of air, which will be defined in a previous stage. The third input is the sphere frontal area, which is a constant. The fourth input is the speed square. This can be calculated as the output of a square operator receiving an input which is the velocity of the sphere. In this case, the velocity is taking only positive or negative values, therefore squaring the velocity will produce the speed squared. The fifth input, which is the drag coefficient, which is a nonlinear function of the Reynolds number, can be represented by using a lookup table. This is a common simulin block, uh, a common operator that allows the specification of any nonlinear function between the input and the output. Uh, one important thing to notice here is that there is a feedback path from the velocity, which is the output of the integrator, back into the calculation of uh, the aerodynamic resistance. And this can be seen by allowing the output of the integrator to enter back into the expression for the aerodynamic resistance. Moving a step backwards, we need to define the Reynolds number, which again, according to part one of this presentation, is defined using this expression. Again, we use a multiplication operator uh, with four inputs, the air density, the speed v, which can be produced by taking the magnitude or the absolute value of the velocity. Again, here the velocity is either a positive or a negative number, real number. Therefore, the speed is the absolute value of the velocity. The third input is the diameter, which is two times the radius of the sphere, divided by the dynamic viscosity of air, mu, which is defined as the density times the kinematic viscosity, and the kinematic viscosity is assumed to be constant. Again, we can see a feedback path from the velocity, which is the output of the integrator block, back into the expression for the Reynolds number. The density can be defined as a linear function of the altitude over the range from 0 to 1,000 meters, which is the range of altitude that we are interested in. What you see here, uh, we plot the red crosses, which are the actual values of air density over an altitude ranging from 0 to 1,000 meters at a constant temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. We then proceed to fit a linear function, which is the blue line, on these uh, discrete points, and we can see that the fit is very good. Therefore, a linear function is sufficient to represent the relationship between the density of air and altitude over this range of interest, which is 0 to 1,000 meters. This fit uh, is a, essentially a solution of a least squares problem and can be done easily using a MATLAB function. And the two constants which define this linear equation can be obtained easily using the MATLAB function. Therefore, we represent the relationship between the density and the altitude in this way in Simulink. Finally, the differential equation related to the rate of change of altitude can be represented in a similar way by using an integrator block whose input will be the velocity, i.e dh by dt, and then when this will be integrated by the integrator block, the output will be the altitude of the sphere. We can specify the initial condition 
of the altitude at time equals zero, and also we can constrain the output of the integrator block to be positive, therefore we are interested only values of altitude greater than zero, i.e. values of altitude above the ground. Finally, we can terminate the simulation using a Boolean operator which uh, outputs a true value when the condition altitude is less than or equal to the radius of the sphere is true. This means the simulation is stopped when the sphere touches the ground. Thank you for participating in part two of this online presentation.